So let me get this straight. On my show, where the face is on the poster, I'm not main eventing. I'm the biggest thing happening in AEW right now. I was the buzz coming out of We Stand in All 3. You need to give me one good reason I'm not the one facing Daniel Fullhart in the main event and why I have to face the baseball boy of all people. Among other things, you and your little posse haven't exactly been on such a hot streak lately, have you? You, in particular, have been on a losing streak before you decided to stick your nose into my biggest main event of the year. Your little group trying to uproot everything this roster has built is yet another factor heaping loads of stress on me. I don't think I have to explain I'm not in a giving mood to let someone on the downswing have a world title match. Frankly, you should be grateful you're not suspended or worse. I suggest you go and have a good match and work your way back if you want a title shot so badly, or someone hungrier like Tank Davis will gladly fill that position. <laughs> Fine. If you want to play that way, I'll make sure I'll leave a lasting impression. I will have my main event one way or another. I'll be Tank Davis. Maybe that'll be the real main event. Nobody will be stopping my ascension to what I rightfully deserve. You can call it my birthright if you wish. But despite yours, mine won't flop. I'll promise you that you have to give in eventually. I... <clears throat> we... are never going to be overlooked again. A murder crows follows everywhere we go Scavenged by a past, asking can this really last It's the rub of the drug, it's the life under the rug The best a man can get, why am I suddenly all wet? Attention when she croons, son, it's getting late, early for you, it's getting late, real early for you. Oh brother, oh brother, oh brother. The money. Welcome, everyone, to AWE's Follow the Money. I'm Brendan Choley, of course, joined by my commentary partner, Daniel Whedon. Yes, folks, we are live here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, with a stacked card for you here tonight at AWE Follow the Money. Let's get started with our first contest, which will be for the... Indeed. Start off hot with the four-way dance, an elimination four-way match. The winner, of course, becoming the number one contender to the AWE Thrill Seekers Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest of AWE Follow the Money is a four-way dance with elimination rules in which the winner will become number one contender for the AWE Thrill Seeker Championship. Introducing first, wrestling out of Lagos, Nigeria, and weighing in tonight at 209 pounds, 
El Phenomeno. This man, El Phenomeno, he made his debut at Colors Flying High, where he made it to the second round, defeating Jinko Gakoga. And tonight he has a hell of an opportunity here to become the number one contender for the Thrill Seekers Championship. Absolutely, and you can see those letters on the back of his jacket. He is representing South African strong style. If anyone is going to show off some strong strikes, I think tonight it'll be this man, El Phenomeno. His theme is a bop. <laughs> I agree. I always like some Soldier Boy. Tonight he has four other, sorry, three other opponents that he has to go through before he can become the number one contender. And the other one, one of the other ones, is coming out right now. Next, wrestling out of Naples, Italy, and weighing in tonight at 220 pounds, the Neo Horror Show. Chris Tesla! Chris Tesla competed as Chris Moore both at We Stand and Awe in the five-person newcomers match, although he came up short. And at Colors Flying High, where he also went to the second round, defeating Connor Riggs. I mean, a lot has changed in this competitor. Absolutely, Chris Tesla has undergone quite the transformation since his last appearance in uh, AWE tonight. I'm hoping that maybe he shows off uh, maybe a new, maybe a more violent side of Chris Tesla. Next, representing the new millennia, wrestling out of Santiago, Chile, and weighing in tonight at 220 pounds, Vida Eterna. Here is a man that I am very familiar with myself, Vita Eterna, of course, making his AWE debut here tonight. Wrestles in PPW as one half of the tag team, the New Millennia, with Satoru Yamashita. Uh, he definitely has shown himself to be quite the entertaining luchador. Let's see if he can uh, pull off something just as entertaining here as he can in PPW. Well, he's got a lot of people watching him here tonight. He's got to show off, and I think he's going to show those skills that he's developed in Pure Pro and in Nura. Absolutely. And finally... Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and laying it tonight at 215 pounds, the Ironheart, Cash! And of course, what more is there to say about the unique superstar that is Cash? He's got a robot arm! He's got a robot arm, Danny! I mean, he competed in the Thrill Seekers last year in 2020, although he was eliminated in the first round by Vandy Kiragaya. I think, however, a year of training and trying can make a difference here for the Iron Heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt, Cash has got a lot to prove and a lot to, uh, let's say, make up for uh, in tonight's Fatal 4-Way. And he might even be able to come out with a title shot at the end of it. Absolutely. And now here we go. Referee rings the bell. And now, oh, oh man. <laughs> High-flying action out the gate. Absolutely. That's what you can expect from the Thrill Seekers division here in AWE. Oh. Thrill Seekers pride themselves on being fast moving, very hard hitting as well. These guys do anything they can to give the AWE crowd a perfect show. And honestly, I don't think they've failed at that so far. No, now double submissions here. Double submissions. Very interesting. Interesting indeed. You can see Chris Tesla on the uh, on the right there fighting out of Cash Cash's submission hold. Okay, well, El Phenomeno has got that bridging figure for on Vita to turn up, but it doesn't say that he gets out of it. 
Oh, and you can imagine the uh, the torque that that must put on your legs if you're in a, a an already damaging submission taken to the next level by forcing your legs upwards and outwards, making them bend in ways that they should never bend. It's very smart to do against someone who's speedy, who uses his legs to his advantage. Yes. Now, drop down, ducks under. Oh, big Larry by taken Elf down. Meanwhile, on the outside here, you can see. Chris Tesla and Cash brawling right in front of the announce table here. Cash blocks that shot. Oh, and Chris Tesla with a block of his own. And now Job will be by Phenomenal. More rights oh. there by Cash. And now Turner shooting. Oh, Phenomenal in the corner. No. A little avoid. You can see the way that uh, Turner might have landed on the attempt at a drop kick there, but. That Pele kick putting Phenomeno down pretty succinctly. And that beat a turn right in the corner. Jump oh. and kick there. There's the you got too many of those, they might rock you for good. The last thing you would want, of course, is for a, a lasting injury, but when you're in the ring, you don't you can't really think much of, of outside of in the moment. So I you know what? Whenever you hit harder, it's also a good thing because it, it puts your opponent away faster. Oh, they're doing Acai DDT by Vita Eterna. Only gets on one count. Got to head right up to the top rope. And we see Eterna shooting, shooting star press. press. What a move to. Oh, oh, oh Phenomenal is the first the one out. first eliminated. Chris oh, Tesla oh. just beating on Cash on the outside. Oh god, spinning heel kick there by Vita Turner. Knocks oh down god. Tesla. The ring now. Oh, oh, oh wow, drops They him. realized at the moment that they were both staring at a competitor that they hadn't even met yet. Vita yes. Turner coming out on top in that one, but it looks like his uh, his luck might be over here. Got a now grip on the tights. Oh. Polar pile driver there by Chris Tesla. Good lord. Hooking the leg very for smart. sure. No, oh. Vita kicks out. Not enough. Oh, oh. And now. Oh, oh. no. Oh. Oh. Snapping that arm. God. Push the face there. Oh, God. Oh. He's got that robot arm. That robot arm. He's clamping it around the, oh, the, my God. the, the throat of. of Chris Tesla cutting off the air supply, I'm sure, and, and making it hard for him to breathe, and oh. Chris Tesla taps. Now we're down to the final two. Vita Eterna and oh. the Ironheart Cash. Vita Eterna, Ironheart have both shown that they are definitely worth paying attention to here so far in this short little uh, sprint that they've had. And now they get to face off essentially one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's just a stomp in the back of the head. I'll knock the hands up. Absolutely. Oh, wait. Catches him. Oh, arm trap. Reverse STO there by Cash. I know. Cash. Oh. Be looking for that choke. Oh, he's got it. Around the neck. Oh. Tesla and tapped out to this. Will be to Eterna. The back mount. And it oh, has to. What a decisive victory for the Ironheart here tonight. With two um, eliminations in this match, you can tell that he's definitely not one to sneeze at, especially after you said, after that year of, of training and trying, Cash is almost like a whole new man here. Yes. He's gonna prove exactly why he deserves that Thrill Seekers title, but of course, first, he'll have to go through the current Thrill Seekers champion, Kota Amuro. Or Cedric Young. Or Cedric Young. It could be Cedric Young, you're correct. It's another match that I'm looking forward to. And of course, your winner of this match, the man who made two of his opponents tap out. The winner of this match and number one contender for the AWE Thrill Seeker Championship, Cash! The Iron Heart reigns supreme here tonight.
Up next, we've got one hell of a fight on our hands. Oh, baby. Oh, man. Iski Saito. And Toma. These two have had quite the history with each other. Where to even begin with these two? Saito, very accomplished in his own right tonight. He's got a challenge that, while he may have faced it before, it's it's nothing like anything you'll ever face one time after another. It feels like Toma's always reinventing and bringing a new style of violence. The following contest is a singles match scheduled for what ball? Introducing first. Wrestling out of Tokyo, Japan, and weighing in tonight at 240 pounds, it's the Saito! I mean, as we've seen here in recent months here in AWE, Itsuki Saito has been dealing with the fallout of just the Nishikido family just continually attacking him. And it seemed like he got some sort of respect from Soda Nishikido at We Stand, but... I guess Toma is not through with him, not even in the slightest. Listen, if I were Itsuki Saito, he's a stronger man than I, I'll tell you that, because if I had a guy like Toma chasing me around, I think I'd be booking the next flight out of the country. He's yeah, a very scary man. Absolutely. Rightfully the lieutenant of the Mishida family. Speaking of the lieutenant, here he comes. And his opponent, wrestling out of Osaka, Japan, and weighing in tonight at 405 pounds, he is accompanied to the ring by Koji Nishikido and is the lieutenant of the Nishikido family, Toma! Look at this big bruiser. Look at this man. <laughs> oh my goodness. As you heard uh, the ring announcer say, the lieutenant of the Nishikido family, Toma, absolutely the big bruiser of the, uh, of the family more or less, you know, second in control to Soda Nishikido himself. Koji uh, Nishikido practically hand-picked Toma for his size and his strength, and he's much more aggressive and calculated, or much more aggressive than the calculated leader, I should say. And uh, in particular, he seems to have it out for uh, Itsuki Saito, of course, after Itsuki left the Nishikido family. Uh, and, you know, just as a fun fact, uh, you know, Toma, found by Koji, actually was wrestling in Japan in a deathmatch promotion. Oh, my so, God. So if that doesn't tell you, you know, the kind of violence and the kind of uh, the pain that Toma's willing to endure in order to, uh, I don't know, get his man, I guess, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Because... The, the light tubes, the skewers, the barbed uh, wire, I can uh, just uh, imagine uh, the pain gusset, he's gone through. Gusset plates, ugh. Ugh. Well, regardless, uh, I don't know if we'll be finding any of that here tonight, but Toma is still in for quite the fight. It's Saito now sporting a, a new haircut. Yes, looks very, very nice. nice. Oh, God. Oh, starting off hot with oh, Toma launching oh, Itsuki Saito. Of course, uh... Over the over the hiatus, over the AWE break, we we saw the uh, the momentary, I suppose, resurrection. Maybe not resurrection, but the momentary resurgence of Itsuki Saito. He participated in the uh, New Era Heavyweight Championship tournament, making it, I believe, to the second round before eventually losing to Jamie Holding. Uh, er, oh no, it would be the first round. But regardless, or no, it was the finals, something like that. Regardless, <laughs> Itsuki Saito has proven his worth not only here but in other companies as well. One of the hardest hitters I've ever witnessed. Oh man! Once again, gets thrown <laughs> by Toma. Just that brute strength there. Not to take anything away from 
Brood, another competitor. Oh, it drops oh. there by Itsuki Saigo. Yes, absolutely. Brood, another hard hitter in his own right. Tonight, Toma. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, oh my stretch oh. muffler. The Just strength. Bending Itsuki Saito's leg around that neck of, of Toma. Definitely trying to, you know, hyperextend those muscles, make it harder for Itsuki to hit something like uh, his, his running blockbuster, of course. And now, oh, plants him into the cover. Smartly uh, pushing away from the ropes, but of course, no rope breaks at all. Could have given uh, Itsuki some leverage, though, to slip out of the uh, the ring. And now oh. just choking him, just Wrenching. making him, trying to breathe for air here. But of course, oh, Saito escaping. Oh. And he flips nice over Toma. By Itsuki. Oh, that what a kick. Shift. Oh, oh. Oh! Stomps him and down. And that's why you never slap a guy like Toma in the face. Saito, whoa, oh my lord! What a move! Okay. Reverse blockbuster, you could say. And now, uh -oh. Oh, God. Uh -oh. oh, claw! <laughs> Squeezing down on the face of Itsuki Saito, trying to, trying to make him lose consciousness. You can see him kicking his legs and... Oh! Oh, oh he oh, forces God. him off! <laughs> just gets slapped. There's a receipt for earlier. Oh no! Oh! oh drops shot him. Shot treatment. And now, two. No! no. Not enough there. That has Toma got thought he was done with him. to hurt, regardless of whether or not that was the end. That had to hurt. Instead of fighting back here. Oh, it's caught again. Uh oh. Oh, what the hell? Oh god. Oh! oh. Reverse targeting. neck breaker there by Toma. Just targeting the neck of Itsuki Saito. And the air rate press position and now. Oh, no, again! Oh! Come on, not again, please. Oh! <laughs> Just gonna squish his head like a bug. Normally, I, you know, normally I, I wouldn't take the light in seeing some kind of mugging like this, but honestly, just. Watching Toma do what Toma does best is such a spectacle. It's like breaking out of that crossface Cobra clutch, and now oh, first STO there. Nice executed there. Oh, might be looking for that. Like I said before, that running blockbuster. Here we go. Jumps up. Oh, Plants him with it. Into the cover, Koji in despair on the outside. Two, no! Toma fights another day. Oh, Saito feeling it, that fighting spirit. Deep in his chest. And now, oh, oh chopping! Oh. Off the ropes, and another right to the skull. I can't help but think. Swept. You can saw just the, the ease that Toma had in, in getting up after that. Toma's got to have quite the thick skull. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He does have a big head. You don't you don't get to a, a position like Toma is, of course. Oh, wait a oh, minute. Oh, shit. Oh. Toma oh, with, oh. with the rope. The rope on his shoulder. Two. That's it. I guess the thick skull wasn't enough for that beast within planting Toma. I think finally Itsuki Saito has finally gotten the Nishikido family off his back. I would Hopefully sure hope so. Hopefully for the so. final time and he can move on. I, would, I hope so. Blockbuster right there. That's height the leap by Saito to even get that. And you know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I think Toma fell pretty hard here tonight. Absolutely. The winner of this match, Itsuki Saito. It's a bit tired, but he's still happy. He's still glad that he won.
All I would right. For, a, for a, a, a task like Itsuki pulled off, I think I would be over the moon for a, with, from a victory like that. Oh. Oh. I don't, I don't know. I, I guess they're not done yet. This is far from over. Wishful thinking on my part. Wait, wait, what? Koji! What in the hell? Oh, oh my god. god! Tiger suplex! Drops him with a tiger suplex! Toma, what the hell? What? Oh, oh no. my god. No, 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 that's an old man! That's an old man, come on! Please! Oh! oh. Torture rack neck breaker on the freaking ramp. What's wrong Good with you? Lord! I I wonder if this is is this also Toma's resignation? The Nishikido family is crumbling apart here. Oh my god. But I mean I mean regardless, we have to move on. Um wow. Uh okay. Our next match, of course, Tommy Grotto facing off against Nero Wilkinson. Wow. <sighs> All right, on with the show. next contest is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, wrestling out of New York and weighing in tonight at 219 pounds, he represents the new force Coben, the Fever Dream, Tommy Grotto! What a look. The intimidating stature of Tommy Grotto, the Fever Dream. Of course, at, uh, we stand in all three, as I'm sure you all know. Evocation staged a betrayal of the new Forest Coven in a big fashion. You know, seeing that there was a much larger world out there than just being a mere hitman, of course, he started to make connections and he, and he talked within his circles. Of course, I'm sure he used uh, whatever he could, all of his, his tricks up his sleeve to get the absolute best connections. And of course, he definitely made some of the best connections. Made a big statement as well, of course, at the end of the Mithra main adverse Macabre Denton match. He took out both of them. And of course, at the end of that match, he was he was also helped by uh, a very familiar looking, well, familiar. And that was, of course, this man, Miro Wilkinson. his opponent wrestling out of London, England and weighing in tonight at 198 pounds. He represents the Black Circle, Nero Wilkinson. As we say here, Nero Wilkinson, a somewhat mysterious individual. The kid's been plenty visible in his career, though he has a bit of a bad habit falling into groups of, uh, let's say, particular peculiar interests, as you say. His eye was taken out by an ill-fated cult known as the Lost Light. Later, a group called the Age of Ecstasy took him in as well. Now this kid finds himself in the clutches of the Black Circle. And is surely looking to make an impact. Yes, of course. But first, he has to go through that man standing on the, on the outside of the ring, Tommy Grotto. You know, Tommy Grotto, no love lost, I'm sure, for Matt uh, Macabre Denton, rather. Cobb Denton, the one who unmasked him, but, you know, he will gladly, I'm sure, fight on the behalf of his leader, Mithra Maynard. Grotto, of course, known as the Fever Dream, a move shared with his knee trembler finishing maneuver. Oh, right into a cover. One count, of course, uh, that Fever Dream, also the name of his knee strike finish. Deadly kicks, heavy knees are usually said to leave you in like a fever dream-like state. And of course, you know, beyond that, the, uh, the connection is, is pretty simple. Of course, Tommy Grotto hasn't had much luck with 
championships or wins lately. But in the early days, he used to have it all. Oh, Earl Wilkinson with a small package there. Two. Oh, oh but Brad Rivers into one of his own. Oh. And there, now Nero getting on the outside of the ring. Brad a win for him here. Could bring his group back up on the upswing. Absolutely. You can see Nero, though. Oh, oh, brings him down face first onto the pavement. That padding is, uh, is very thin. Russian leg sweep on the outside there. Good lord. Oh, going to target the back now. It's a good strategy to, uh, whenever you're in a match like this, you know how dangerous oh. your opponent can be. Oh, oh wait dear. A wait a minute. Speaking oh, my danger. god. Oh, oh, god. He just threw him. Oh, my lord. Oh, god. No love lost between the New Forest Coven and the Black Circle. I can tell you that pretty damn much. Absolutely. And in a count of eight. As I was saying earlier, you know, it's a smart idea, and you're in a match like this. You know, you know how dangerous your opponent is. That goes for both Nero and Tommy Grotto. It is absolutely a smart move to, you know, pick a body part earlier in the match and start working on it. You know, make sure your opponent is as incapacitated as possible, especially that also assists in you know, making it so their finisher is less and less effective. At the end of the day, I think both of these men are pulling that off quite well. Of course, Tommy Grotto targeting the back, the neck. And Nero Wilkinson, you saw there, that knee strike to the head on the apron. Oh. Go for a spinning wheel kick, but gets an elbow instead. Oh, oh. tries to go for a corner. Could take take his head off with that one. Tommy oh. Grotto. Oh! Spins suplex there. Spins him out with that swinging backdrop. And now, as you can see, continuing to target the back. Maybe perhaps even more particularly the lower back of Nero Wilkinson. It's back up. Wilkinson throws oh, him to the outside. Hangs on though. Oh, oh no. Dear. Oh no. What is he planning here? Oh my god. Oh DDT. my god. The right hardest part of the ring, barring the, of course, all metal ring posts. The apron of is... Of course, the center of that ring, the probably most fortified uh, they have area. Yeah, especially with that, you know, the load-bearing, I don't know what you want to call it, a big, basically a big pole sticking right up into the apron to keep the ring standing. And I can only imagine how that must feel being driven by the top of your head first, right into that spot. Oh, big spin kick there. Mike Grotto. As you mentioned those deadly kicks earlier. Now going for a cover. One. Still a one count. Surprising. Just that stomp between the shoulder blades. A bit disrespectful. Also a smart move. Still keeping on that back. Oh, man. Tommy Grotto looking to get maybe some revenge for being dropped on the apron like that. Here we go. Another deadly kick. Oh! right into the temple of that Nero Wilkinson. And now, Up to the top rope. Oh, oh tries to go for a double stomp, but he missed the double stomp. The calculation. He definitely did land knees first onto, uh, onto one of Nero's legs, though. But of course, not enough just yet. He dropped the legs very unique there. Absolutely. Not a job breaker. This. Oh, right, Buster! Oh, vertical drop! Targeting that oh. head still. I think Grotto was out on his feet there. He was starting to get up. I think that was just on instinct. Absolutely. Big, Big drop, drop, kick. drop kick. And it looks like Nero might be trying to say to Tommy Grotto, you know, my kicks are just as powerful, if not more powerful, than yours. Oh. oh, dragon screw! Very smart move, targeting the legs. Targeting anyone's legs will hurt, no matter if their finishing move depends on them or not. Big or small. Oh, oh god. Back and forth, these two brawling on the outside, not wanting to give an inch to either of each other. Oh. Oh. Got him. Oh, oh, big Uranagi. That falling Uranagi. And now, Nero Wilkinson 
Could be looking to put him away here. Oh, oh my God! What a knee! And Tommy Grotto is bleeding from the forehead. That's oh. it. Damn. What a what a knee strike by Nero Wilkinson. Oh, I, sh I shudder to think of exactly how painful that must have been for uh, for Tommy Grotto. Though, then again, I mean, I can't imagine he's still conscious after that. I think we need to get a doctor on him. He's stripping oh. like crazy here. Oh. I saw that spin kick. That means shades of I can think of a couple, one specific legend in the business who's hit a spin kick just as beautiful as that one. Oh, there you saw him land right on Nero's legs, knee first. Thought that could have been. He was going after those legs afterwards. Yes. Absolutely. The winner of this match, Nero Wilkinson. Regardless, your winner here tonight, Nero Wilkinson, and by extension, the Black Circle. Are the lights on? What's going on? What, what's going on? What? What is? It's not a test. What? I didn't know there was a test. Did you know there was a test? I I did not. Oh. Oh. Oh man. Could it be? Could it be the return? Is he? Is he back? The witch boy. The leader of the new forest coming! Mithra Maiden! He's back! He's here! One of the most dominant champions in AWE has returned and is staring at. Uh oh. Oh. Nero, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That is maybe not the smartest move. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh my god. Toss Whedon! Look behind you! Good lord! It's my dad! Flinging Nero Wilkinson! <coughs> Kick his ass! Off the ropes! Throws him off against the ropes! Oh my Whoa. god! Mithra Maynard! Taking his time coming down to the ring! Does German beast! Oh, and he said Wreck to finish it. House. He said uh -oh. to finish it. Oh no! Oh. Power! Oh. Not done. Das German beast has returned. Oh no! German, German suplex, suplex, and you know, you know what this leads into? Das Lariat! Ripcord! Das Lariat! Laying down the message that the new Forest Coven is still here and that one loss won't take him out. Oh man. I think we have reached a full on war in AWE. What a display by the new Forest Coven. But we can't, you know, as, as incredible as that was, we can't linger on too long. We got a title match coming up. The one versus all championship. The open challenge title that everybody wants. But this all is, covers. I mean, what more can you say? It's like a workhorse title. Everyone who has it is, you know, their champion for a reason. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the AWE One vs. All Championship. Introducing first, the champions. Wrestling out of Kent, Washington and weighing in tonight at 172 pounds. They represent forever the Lionhearted and they are your AWE One vs. All Champion, Vandy Kiragaya. Danny, what can you tell me about Vandy Kiragaya? I mean, Vandy Kiragaya has got a sizable career here in AWE. They're a, they are a two-time UWE champion. 
No on the smaller side, they're tenacious as hell, but surprisingly strong. I mean, have you seen this guy throw people? I know. This person people? It's incredible. The power that Vandy packs and all of their moves tonight. They have to defend that a one versus all title one more time. Fun fact that I want to say here is uh, they've competed in all three major AWE tournaments. The Royal 48, oh. the Thrill Seekers, and Colors Flying High. Quite, quite an accomplished wrestler, wrestler Vandy Karagai is. All things considered. So they're used to like surprising outcomes from these oh. tournaments where Absolutely. you don't know who you're wrestling in the next round. Yeah. Tonight, that's no exception. Tonight, they have quite literally anyone in the AWE locker room or even unsigned to AWE who can challenge for that one versus all title. I, how do you prepare for something like that? You just gotta go in there and you just gotta, you just gotta think about everything. You gotta go in there, you gotta have some game plans in your head. Yes. And you just gotta go. Yes, I would say so. Definitely a lot of thinking on the fly as far as uh, you know, the one versus all title matches go. Tonight, Vandy Kirigaya looks for another defense. I, for one, am very interested to find out who exactly their opponent's going to be. Hmm? Who is... Uh... Oh! What? Huh? What? Uh... Reina Storm, the first ever AWE Women's Champion? Huh? Oh, man. And their opponent, the challenger, wrestling out of Tokyo, Japan, the Monarch, Reina Storm. Reina, Wait, huh? Reina Storm? What, what the oh, hell? Challenging for the <laughs> World <What's the laughs> Championship? <laughs> We have truly crossed over into uncharted territory. The first this is ever the first time intergender yeah, challenger <laughs> oh for the AWE One versus All Championship. Vandy Karagaya has to take on Reina Storm tonight. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm in shock. Regardless, we have to move on. Reina Storm, of course, as you said, a former AWE Women's Champion. One of the most decorated superstars in AWE, and perhaps also one of the most, uh, I guess, hard-hitting. Reina Storm, known for her strikes, known for her uh, her high-flying offense. Wow, I mean, I mean, there's no doubt, of course, that I'm sure Vandy has seen a lot of Reina Storm matches. They know what to expect, but I mean, this has to throw. I, I this would throw anyone off of their game plan. I'm sure. Wow, Reina Storm! Well, I mean, regardless, you know, we gotta we gotta get into the action here. Could we have our first ever women's our first ever female AWE one versus all champion? Uh, uh, uh. Huh. Wow. Alright, here we go. Alright, here we go. <laughs> that collar noble wow. tie up. Wow, I mean <laughs> This is actually wanna... happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to dwell on this for too long, of course. We want to get into the action here, but, you know. Of course. One of, definitely not the first, but one of the first intergender matches in AWE history. The first intergender title match in AWE history. This just goes to show, honestly, that anything is possible here in the Astonishing Wrestling Enterprise. Oh! Oh, oh my oh. god! Punk plunge! Just like Alexei Cannon, oh, Reina Storm's former partner. What, what a Reggie callback. Do you, that had to have been on purpose, I'm sure. Absolutely. And now I'm sure Karagaya definitely wants the best out of Reina Storm, wants to bring out all the rage, the fighting spirit, the anger, and there's no better way than to be taunting her with things like that. Reina Storm now in control, though. Going for these penalty kicks after a dragon through leg screw. <clears throat> Oh, wait, what? Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Look at the strength of the Monarch! Good lord! Trying to leg sweep again! Now has Reyna in that uh, front face lock suplex clutch? No! 
Oh, ran it with one of her own. I, I guess that's something we haven't thought of. The strength of Reyna. I mean, she's she's got that too. She's she very... Oh, oh, God! <laughs> oh, holy <laughs> nearly <laughs> taking Storm's head off. And Reyna Storm treats it like it was nothing. Got up and kept fighting. She's a strong, fierce competitor. And now, Angle oh! slam! That Olympic slam. Raina Storm definitely proving that she deserves to be in any title picture. A absolutely, and I would love to see more women take on the, the one versus all champion, or even just more any champions. Any title. Like any champion. Absolutely. I would say, you know, uh, if you know, we get to see oh, Raina Storm challenge for the one versus all title, who's to say that next maybe it'll be uh, oh, I don't know, Jill Turner oh. challenging challenging for the for the undisputed title. You know what? I would love to see Daniel Florida get his ass kicked. <laughs> Jill Turner, I'm sure, has I'm, a lot of feelings towards Daniel Florida. A lot of painful feelings to know. She would, oh, wait! Demon Slayer! Demon, Demon Slayer, Slayer locked in! Center of the ring! And, and now Reina Storm! Able to fight out! Oh. In the corner. Oh! Big knee. Now, going from behind. Ooh. Oh, wait. Nice counter. Maybe with that counter. Off the ropes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what a knee strike right to the face. Oh! Now they trip her down. Now anything. He's actually breaking up a sweat here. Anything is possible. Oh my god. We can see, you know, we can see, like I said, Jill Turner, undisputed title. We can see something like. You know, Monster Zero challenge for the Unity titles. Oh God! We could even see Brad Epic. We could even, oh, we could even Ooh. see Brad Epic challenge for the AWE Women's title. A uh, dream he's wanted for the ages. The dream, the dream that he has wanted for who knows how long. Oh, and now, uh oh, plants them. Oh, drops them with that Argentine sidewalk slam. Two. Oh. oh, we almost had our first ever female AWE uh, one versus all champion. History was almost made there, but Vandy tripped her down again, and now just trying to collect themselves. I mean, this How is a, this is a tough competitor, a two-time, yeah. two or three-time uh, women's champion, and now oh, what a back body drop. Slips out again. Oh, what the hell? What the? Oh! What was the dice? Swings are out so quickly into the Demon Slayer again. Got it locked in. The submission. Wait. Green up again. Over. Again oh. slipping out. What a forearm. Strong Joshi form. You will see that a lot of the time. And now. Forces are oh, down. They just push her down. Come on. Slap. What a slap. I'm sure, you know, as disrespectful as it may have seemed, I'm sure, you know, if anyone has all the respect in the world, it'd be someone like Vandy Karagaya. All the respect for Raina Storm. Well, as you're saying that, he's bashing her head there <laughs> in the corner. So, you know, I think respect has been thrown out the window. <laughs> while, I, while I can see what you're saying, I think this might all be a ploy to draw out, you know, the most... Angry, you know, hard hitting, the best of Raina Storm. I think Vandy truly wants this to be the biggest challenge they've ever faced. And so far, I'd say that's a pretty, you know, apt statement. Oh, oh! Which is their leg, and now. Storm's again. Oh, oh! oh. A tripter. I keep seeing that. Just pure disrespect here to Reyna. I don't think Vandy thinks Reyna is a lesser competitor. I think that they think that Reyna is just... Maybe not cut out for it. Not Wait cut out minute. for this. This is what Spring she's going to expect. Oh, wow. And Rana with that wrist clutch. Vandy right back on their feet. Got them by the neck. Throws them off. Oh. Man, I'm, I'm still just in shock, honestly. 
Yeah, I'm still not over this. <laughs> <laughs> Punch to the gut the there. Oh, I'm gonna shut the lot there. A lot of force. <laughs> Knee lift. I'm to say it. And now, what is this? Oh! oh! Forward uh, suplex slam there. I have Vandy Kiragaya now. Standing over Reina Storm. I don't know, maybe. Can't imagine they'd be talking trash, could they? Quite possibly. We can't see their mouth. Oh. Well, you know what? I think. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Now Rain is back up. Uh oh. Power. Oh, oh my God! Oh. She landed on the bottom rope there. Good Lord. Now up to the very shoulder. top. Insult. Whoa! Insult. Oh! She got out of the way. Rain a storm. Rolling out of the way, just barely avoids it. Vandy's still catching her. Oh, she's, she's right back, back up. up. Oh. Tries to go for the calf kick. Oh, oh stiff kick oh, right she's in the still, chest. She's still standing though. Still fighting. Oh, now, oh, there's blood. Let's hope that uh, that's the only blood we'll see in this match. Oh, and now turns them the around. Back and now. Hard Irish whip into the ropes. Tilt a whirl. Back tilt a whirl. Backbreaker. The referee. Oh, wait. Wow. Showing concern for, uh, I don't know, maybe the health of Vandy in this match. Asking Vandy if they want to stay in, if they're okay. And I think yeah, that's Vandy a yes. seems okay to me. <laughs> Kick. And now Demon Slayer once again. Got it cinched in. Will Reyna tap? And, she, and she has to. Oh, man, what a match. A very strong <laughs> showing here from Reina Storm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Oh, Vandy got the win. They had to fight tooth and nail. The last person I, I expected from that was Reina Absolutely. Storm. Absolutely. Nevertheless, still your one the winner of this match, champion. and still AWE One versus All champion Vandy Kira Gaia. I would say this is a pretty huge victory, wouldn't you? Absolutely. I mean, a three-time women's champion has just lost to the, to the Wild Child. Vandy Kira Gaia. Their first defense. Definitely showing off uh, why they deserve that one versus all title. And I'm sure if they keep up performances like this, they'll have that title for a long, long time. What a match. I'm sure FTL's got to be happy about that one. Nevertheless, we move on to yet another championship match. This one might be a little bit more violent. Oh, I'm going to love this. So much violence and brutality will be shown in this one match. The both Phoenix these, Rising title is on the line. Both of these men are known for hitting like Mack trucks. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the AWE Phoenix Rising Championship. songs that are bops. 
absolutely <laughs> death march. And that is exactly what we're seeing here from Argus Gold. Ever since his debut, he has been on a hot streak. Most impressive battles against Ryan Alexander and War Bacon. This monster has not been pinned or submitted, or lost a singles match for that matter. Only a Rumble, the number one contender's Rumble, which Aldo Anthony won a few months ago. Powerful and aggressive, someone like Rabbit is a perfect match for him. Man, I'm a big fan of power bombs, so I've been. I love them. That excites me even more. Yes. You know? <laughs> power bombs are perhaps one of the one of my favorite moves in wrestling. Absolutely, so, one of the greatest. I'm excited to see exactly what kinds of power bombs we get to see here tonight. Both from Argus Gore and from his opponent. Making Argus wait. There we go. There is nobody quite like Rabbit. What, what else, what can be said about this man, your current Phoenix Rising Champion? Rabbit is perhaps AWE's most accomplished wrestler. You know, he's a two-time One Versus All Champion, an undisputed champion, one of the only two King of Wrestling champions an inaugural tag team champion with his stablemate, a man we'll see later on tonight, Daniel Foolhardy. And now he's the Phoenix Rising champion. Now while- This is his first defense for the belt after yes. winning it from Jody himself at We Standing Off 3. As far as I know. You know, as far as I know, he's one of the, one of the hardest hitting individuals as well. Absolutely. There is no of course, one. he had his mind basically warped by Daniel Foolhardy, I would say, after the uh, ballroom blitz. Yes. Very brutal contest in the animal trap match. And of course, Rabbit helped Daniel Foolhardy get that world title. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless of that, tonight, Rabbit is in singles action. And the, the unpredictable nature of Rabbit is, means that you can expect anything from the Night Terror. And I'm sure tonight that'll be no different. I would say even especially because of his opponent, a man unlike anyone he has ever faced in his history here in AWE, Argus Gore. Now milking this entrance for all he can. I mean, when you're the champ, you get to do that. But... I don't remember Rabbit doing this much when he was world champion. When you're the champion, the show runs on your time. And Rabbit is proving that point. He is making sure everybody knows, making sure that little factoid is drilled into everybody here's head. He is the Phoenix Rising Champion. What a match we're in for. Introducing first, the challenger. Wrestling out of Poland and weighing in tonight at 235 pounds, this is Argus Gore. And his opponent, the champion. Wrestling out of San Francisco, California and weighing in tonight at 210 pounds, he represents the cause and is your reigning and defending AWE Phoenix Rising Champion, the Night Terror, Rabbit. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm sure we know, you know, my broadcast partner's thoughts on the cause by now, or at least on his thoughts on uh, one of the members, the current undisputed champion, Daniel Foolhardy. Mr. Whedon, what can you tell me? How do you feel about the other members of the cause? Do you echo the same sentiment as you do with our current champion or look I, I respect rabid but i mean when you associate with that type of individual that type of conniving oh my oh, god man snarky sarcastic son of a bitch wow leader of the cause daniel foolhardy all my respect for you goes out the window but he is a very tenacious competitor i will say that and i i 
won't hold any biases oh. here on commentary. Oh. I'll try oh. not to anyway. Gosh. Those cross face punches. I mean, definitely some strong words from uh, Daniel Whedon. Here. Now, oh. Oh, caught him. Oh. Brings him down over the knee. Nicely executed. Trying to chop down that giant redwood. Argoscore is not a small man, that is for sure. No way. Don't let that 230 something odd frame fool you. That is all muscle. Four percent body fat, at at the least. This man has never eaten butter in his life. No, because he doesn't like fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow! He immediately popped up after that knee drop. Vicious. Oh! Clawing at the face now. Bit of a dirty, a dirty tactic there, I'd have to say. Yeah, you know, I mean. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, yeah, especially against you can a guy like Rabbit. See the claws there, Rabbit on his fingers. Rabbit, like I said earlier, one of the most unpredictable, if not the most. Oh, oh! Just as I was saying that, what a creative counter by the Phoenix Rising champion. Rabbit remains one of, if not the most unpredictable wrestlers in all of AWE. And he's proving here tonight why he deserves to be Phoenix Rising champion as he brings the boots to Argus Gore. Of course, Argus was going to go for that Gore in the corner, but he got caught with that DDT. Oh. Now Rabbit throwing him to the outside. Kick across the uh -oh. back, but Argus, oh, he, don't, he didn't feel it. Oh. Rolling right out here uh, in front of the announce table. Oh! Once again, that hardest part of the ring. That apron, bring him down face first, right in the middle frame. No. Oh, oh man, oh, the corner! Just, oh, face wash. Argus score. Off the ropes. Oh! oh. MDK, murder, you, death, kill. Do you think Argus score is gang affiliated? Absol absolutely. Look at absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? I can't disagree with you there. Oh! Oh, man. That wheelbarrow neck neckbreaker breaker. into the cover. No. That was a surprisingly quick kick out. Now you've got to wonder if that was. Oh! <laughs> you've got to wonder if some of these things Rabbit is is doing to counter or, or be a go against Argus Gore here. Are they on instinct or are they conscious efforts? I think Rabbit is made out of a hundred percent pure instinct. I agree. Oh! Oh! Excellent. Devastating up. chop there from that claw. I would say you know if, if I'm not going to try and give pointers to something I, you know, don't know too much about, but if I were Rabbit, I would stay on the offensive. The legs are probably one of Argus's most valuable assets, as far as his moveset goes. And now folk trains are coming, as he would say. Oh, coming to the station. Choo-choo! Oh, a forearm. And a bulldog. Center of the ring. Not done yet. Rabbit gonna continue the assault. There he is! The snare trap connects. One, two, no. What a close, close kick out. That was almost the end of the match. Argus score. You know, if, if, if he was hurt, he wouldn't let you know it. Oh, but uh -oh. wait a minute. Caught him. Animal trap. Well, the animal trap, he didn't hook the leg there. Immediately enough. It oh, enough. Wow. It's enough. Took Argus down with authority, may I add. Still, your Phoenix Rising Champion. The Violent Vermin, the Night Terror, the Crazy Raccoon, whatever you want to call it. Your Phoenix Rising Champion, at the end of the day, is Rabbit. There's the Animal Trap, one of the most devastating finishing moves in AWE. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen some some people try to take it, but it's not quite as effective as when Rabbit does it. Rabbit puts that extra little bit of little bit of power behind it, brings him down just a little bit harder than others. You know, picks him up just a little bit higher than others, and that's why he is, dare I say, the master of 
that animal trap. Let's see here the one, two, three, and the title retained. One, two, three, raccoon. The winner of this match is still AWE Phoenix Rising Champion, Rabbit. Oh, if I'd get out of there if I were you. Yeah, get, get out of there. You don't get out of that. there. Way Rabbit was performing tonight, you know, I gotta think, you know, he he, he don't want no bread, he don't want no water, he just wants meat. <laughs> uh, left a skin mark on that boy. <laughs> oh, I hope not. And Rabbit showing off. Arcus. Oh, what the hell? Howling oh. at the moon, and now he gets a scoop slam from Argus Gore. I guess Argus Gore is not happy. Maybe a little sour after that loss. Oh, clubbing blood in the back of the kick. Oh. My God, man. Off the ropes. Oh, no, here it comes. Gore! 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 Oh, no, not again. Gore! Oh, gore! Gore, Argus, Gore. He's continuing on this assault. We gotta get someone out here. But who's gonna come out? Who would, I don't, I can't think of anyone who would want to willingly come out here and stop this, especially with a guy like Argus. I mean, with how the cause has been treating everybody, I'm not surprised. They're treating all these newcomers like this. I guess the newcomers like have had enough. Somebody's finally had enough, and I've gotta be, I'm gonna be honest, I'm glad it's Argus, because there's no one that can hit quite like Argus does. <laughs> Rabbit laid out in the center of the ring. Well, just about the center. Ugh. Man. Regardless, we have to move on here. As Rabbit slowly makes his way. I don't want to dwell on this for too long, but uh, take, take notice here. Rabbit uh, did not receive any help. I mean, I understand Argus is an intimidating guy, but... You got four, no, three teammates that could have come out, and none of them came out and helped Rabbit. Well, they're cowards, and they just want to be 100% before their matches, I guess. I, I mean, you said it, not me. <laughs> the following contest is a three-way, one-ball to a finish Tornado Tag Team match for the AWE Unity Championships. Introducing first, at a total combined weight of 405 pounds, they are the team of the Shu Yaku, Nick Calloway, and the Punk Kid, Jimmy Kane, the Punk Aces! Or as punk. fans know them, Big Dick Nick and Little Jimmy ah, out here tonight. Got him! Punk Aces, the Punk Kid, the Shu Yaku, they're a bright new team at AWE's tag division. Both men stars in their own right. Narrowly missed winning that tag gauntlet on We Stand 3. Of course, an observer would note that it was only because the ref missed a pinfall by Callaway on Nick Hemmerling. So tonight, they got their chance. First. Gotta go through those OTTV and the cards. Next, at a total combined weight of 465 pounds, the team of Nick Hemmerling and Will Parker, together they represent OTTV. Nick Hemmerling, a very talented superstar boxer, Will Parker, has a history in a certain sort of a adult entertainment. It's <laughs> After leader Taylor Taylor defeated Millie Morales at least stand three, with the help of other OTTP stablemates ZK, the takeover was as good as on. And now, you see these two looking to get the tag gold tonight. I'm going to be honest. I, I, I'm trying to stay impartial. I can't stand OTTP. I can't either. Oh, my. Thank, they you, are. thank you for saying that. I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I've said it before, I don't want to dwell on this for too long. What kind of sick individuals, not just Parker and Hemmerly, but ZK and Taylor Taylor. Millie Morales offered you a fair match, Taylor Taylor, 
and you squandered it. You spat in the face of everything this business is about whenever you accepted help from ZK and got a fluke victory over Millie Morales when you knew that she was going to beat you if you didn't get that help. I'm sorry. It is a shame. I, it had to be said. It's absolutely shame. Yeah. yeah. But I digress. We have one more team, and of course, in this uh, three-team triple threat tag team match. What is it with the cause tonight? Making people wait. First rabbit, and now this. Regardless, here come. The cards. And finally, weighing in at a total combined weight of 521 pounds. They are your reigning and defending AWE Unity Champions, the team of Brad Epic and Zam. Together, they represent the cause. Brendan, I hope you don't mind, but I kind of want to go on a tirade on my own here oh, about Brad Epic. Heel. Having to use Zam constantly to win these tag team matches. He gets his ass kicked for the majority of the 90% <laughs> of the match, and Zam has to go in there and help his ass every time. All I'll say... This is not a tag team. That's not a title he should have. But all I'll, he has it all anyway because Sam does all the work. All I'll say is that Brad Epic was dancing around like a little buffoon in their entrance. I'll say that. Look at those silly-ass sneakers. <coughs> Regardless, your Unity champions, Brad Epic and Zam, the two founding members of the Cards a stable who initially looked to uh, reclaim a space for the cast-aside veterans and some air quotes. Those never given a good chance, also in air quotes. Uh, you know, Brad Epic, the leader of the cause. Some may dispute that. I'm not going to say it. Uh, you know, he made this union with Sam, of course, as well as with Daniel Foolhardy and Rabid. They created a power for the duo, unlike anything I think the Unity Division has ever seen. And though the rising threat of the Cage Collection once again has the group on shaky ground, uh, Epic and Zam look here tonight to make their first defense of the Unity titles. And uh, if I can speak through my partner, let's hope it's not a defense at all. Let's be candid here. Okay, we're in there in the center of the ring. Backdrop. Of course, Brad and Zam were attacked by the Cage Collection at the end of Wii Stand. So, Brad Epic. Brad Epic got choke slammed onto a car. T did. And now, <laughs> Fisherman Driver. Oh, you can see Parker hamming it up in the corner. Just like his ever. <laughs> and now, don't forget to smile. No, no I think, oh, wait, cover. And there's Zam say, saving his ass one more time. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I think Parker's acting involves another guy. Okay. <laughs> Hambo. Hambo. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, Oh, oh wait, Callaway! Oh. oh! Might have been setting up for that game over, that super kick, but Brad oh. Epic, is it time? And now the stupidest finishing move of all time, the Rings of Brad. The Rings of Bradern have been locked in! Jimmy oh, I King! I should say stupidest move. Name. That submission is actually pretty painful. Let's see. Kane. Whoa! Big satellite DDT by the Punk Kid. We talked about it earlier. The inverted crush from uh, from Nick Calloway. Oh, oh but wait. Brad, with the roll up. Oh, oh but Jim can't stop. Stop. Oh, 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 oh. super kick there by William Parker. As we said earlier, of course, uh, this initially was supposed to be a regular tag team match. The Punk Aces were added into this match after multiple complaints that. Uh, in that tag gauntlet at We Stand 3. Nick Calloway had a oh. clear pin. Power Crab! Oh, Power the crab. crab! Will Zam tap? Harling's not doing anything about it! Oh, but Zam gets out. Oh. 
was going to say. Oh, Hepling into the cover now, trying to steal the victory right out from under Callaway's nose. Oh, and he gets a knee strike right to the gullet. I was going to say, uh, the pump case is, of course, added to this match after multiple complaints from fans and, and superstars alike, noting that, you know, Callaway had the pin, and instead the referee chose to count the submission. So it's now a triple threat tornado tag team match. Definitely stacking the odds against the cards. Yeah, I'm sure they complained about that too. Having the, adding punk aces here. And now Zam always got Zagatsu! Zagatsu! Cover! Go to Nick Hammerlin. Callaway oh. brings it up. Nick Callaway, a master of his craft, as well as many other men in this match. And I'd like to take a moment and talk about just how good Callaway is at what he does. The lightning quick strikes, the hard hits. He can come at you from any angle and leave you hurt for certain. And honestly, that's all I've been seeing from him here tonight. There you see, big and Gary on the outside. Jimmy Kane. Jimmy Kane. Oh, Brad Epic ruining that for him. Just like how he ruins life. And now position. Oh! Backstabber. Dropping. Hammerling on the knees. Kick in the gut. The instant classic. Instant classic. Oh, plants him with it. One. Two. Throw. No. Damn it. The cause. And more importantly, Brad Epic with the pinfall victory here tonight. I guess he finally proved himself there. Finally proved that he could he wasn't the weak link of the team, that he got the victory and the win. Good for you, Brad. You did it. Good on you, Brad. A plus full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I have to stop being biased. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. I don't want to be biased. There's special exceptions. I gave mine to OTTV. I gave mine to the cause. But hey, your win is here tonight. Regardless of how we, we feel about them. Match. Oh my god. Oh my god. Still, wow. Sam leaking. Leaking. I think uh, he might have gotten kicked on the outside. The cause. Regardless, Damn. your winners and still the Unity Champions. The cause. I've got to wonder who's up next for these guys. Hopefully some monsters, that would be cool. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> well, regardless of how we feel about the outcome to that match, we've got quite the match coming up next. With, uh, a man who, as we saw from the intro, believes that he should be the main event of this show. He did say his face is on the show, but that doesn't mean he gets to be the main event, kid. That doesn't mean Jack. Comes the king of the diamond. This following contest is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, wrestling out of Austin, Texas, and weighing in tonight at 245 pounds, he represents the title town Titans, the Arlington Royal, Tank Davis. Sam King, bring it the F on! Explosion! <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Okay. And we stand in all three. One of the biggest company betrayals happened. Sam King turned on his life on tag team partner JJ Strike. Tank Davis, member of Title Town, is looking to avenge. Just get some bit of revenge. I mean, let's not. Let's not sugarcoat it. He's got quite the fight ahead of him. For all that Sam King is, there's no doubt that Sam King is also, I would say, one of the best wrestlers in AWE today. Especially when he's flanked by the Cage Collection. It's going to be hard. That's all. I, it's going to be difficult. And 
and his opponent, wrestling out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and weighing in tonight at 254 pounds. He's accompanied to the ring tonight by Jack Cage and is representing the Cage Collection, the Emerald Ace, Sam King. And let's also not forget the fact that I'm sure we'll make my partner happy. Sam King not only attacked JJ Strife, he took out Daniel Foolhardy as well whenever he turned and joined the Cage Collection. I mean, I was happy that Sam King refused to join the cause, but I was disappointed that he betrayed his friend like that. That is absolutely. Absolute. I mean, I get that he's been on the downfall recently with a losing streak, but I mean, come on, man, that's your friend. How are you going to do that? Just kick him to the curb. One of your best friends, your, your tag team partner that you've held multiple championships with. You're going to throw that away for what? Money? Money can't. Himself now that Emerald Ace Money can't seems buy to friendship. claim a spot he's always to be. That was his. This new attitude. Well, regardless, Sam King, Tank Davis going to face off here tonight in a one-on-one -on -one contest. A little more on Tank Davis, you know. He was, especially, this is tough because he was a protege of Sam's. Sam was the one who brought Tank into the into the title town titans you know uh, king was the one who picked him he's a tanks a former one versus all champion he's gonna go it alone tonight to prove himself to sam king and not only that but he is trying to stand up to the man oh, who betrayed the group that he calls family See that almost the smug uh, style of Sam King. Oh! Oh, kicks away the hands. Ow. Oh, uh, oh spooky fingers. I can't oh, say that was the... Oh, God. Oh. I can't say that was the smartest of moves by Sam King, but... No. Oh! Tank Davis, well, like I said, an accomplished wrestler in his own right. Both of these men have held multiple titles in multiple companies. So this is truly, I mean, when you think about it, a pretty star-studded match, especially because of their uh, former affiliation. But Whoa. tonight, oh, tonight they're going to be one team. winner. Oh. You see Jack Cage at ringside. And I'm sure Cage must be so proud of Sun King for throwing away all of his, all of his, uh, oh, there you see it. Jack Cage giving King an unfair advantage in this match. I mean, Tank Davis doesn't have a member of the Titans alongside with him. What the oh, hell? Oh, what the hell? Oh, oh no. Ro Pung spiked oh. DDT. Tank Davis does not have anyone in his corner. Not out of consequence, but out of choice. Which I have to respect. I have to. As opposed to Sam King, who needs the distraction, the help of Jack Cage. But at least we don't see those monsters alongside with him. And also, let's be honest, if Matt Gray were here, he'd probably cost Tank a by attacking Sam King. But that's neither here nor there. All I'm saying is, Matt Gray's got his own fight with Sam King, and I'm sure that'll be coming soon after this one. All things considered. <clears throat> Sam King now continuing on the assault. Whoa. Going into that air raid crash position. It's a oh. neck breaker. Now going for a cover. Only one, one count. Kick. kick out. A fighting spirit. Be a sturdy Davis. neck of Tank Davis. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Got right low and now. Right in the bread pushing. basket. Oh, and he throws oh. him to the outside. Nearly like threw the trash him. he is next nearly to Jack threw, Cage. Nearly threw him on top of Jack Cage. Cage helping uh, King to his feet, though. Like I was saying earlier, you've got to think Jack Cage has to be proud of Sam King for throwing away all of his past affiliations for a couple bucks. Oh! oh King's, King's boot. boot. End of the cover. 
two right there. So in a bit of disbelief. I would think he would have thought, you know, Tank Davis does have enough tenacity, but I guess his just his new attitude has just washed away all of his notions. Oh. Targeting the lower back now. Up face lock now. Has him by the back of a neck. Disrespect of Tank Davis. What in the hell? Oh, oh. what? Oh. What is he, what is he tank, planning here? Throwing Tank to the outside now. What is this? Oh. Oh. Kick to the gut. Oh, my God. Power. Oh, my oh. God. No. Oh. oh, the apron. What the hell? What's wrong with you? And Tank Davis still fighting. Oh, he's, he's still up. Oh no! Dragon Tank is suplex. on adrenaline and now Dragon Suplex! That might have snuffed out all the adrenaline. No! No! Tank Davis still fighting. Sam King he looks to be to in a state there. of disbelief here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Again, going, after neck the, going after the neck of Tank Davis. What a brutal fighting style Sam King has adopted here. Look at this. Oh god. Look at that. He's bending his spine like it shouldn't be. It's no spine should bend like that. And now, oh, oh, Tank Davis gets out of it. That back elbow. Wait, Grand Slammer. What? Oh, he's got. He's holding him Stalling. up. Stalling. Oh, oh, Jack. You know too what? much time. Jack Cage. Jack Cage might have been calling Tank's name, trying to get him distracted long enough for Sam to break out, but. Oh, he said some very bad things about his mother. I don't even want that Alex to get <laughs> Oh! Oh, that lighter there. That lighter. A downward spiral. Sam King well, has just to be soaking what? in the attention. Has to be wondering, what will it take to put this guy away? King's oh! Boot! Cracking Tank Davis in the head. And a kick out. Still kicks out. I think we've had see. blood in these last three matches we've had. A crimson mask now beginning to cover Davis's face, but Sam King might be looking to put his suffering away here quickly. King's landing. King's landing. Folds him up. Tank Davis's arm goes limp. Oh, he kicked oh. him. Oh, man. I think Sam King's very heavy with that. Now, Fireman's carry takeover there by Tank Davis. Sam King said earlier he wanted, he was going to show that his match would be like the main event. Oh, and Tank Davis is definitely giving him that kind of fight. And that thunderous lariat. Oh, and the knee drop to the back of the head. Fired out. All tuckered out. I mean, he's used a lot of exhaustion. He is exhausted from using a lot of moves to his advantage here. Now, King's oh, boot. Third King's boot. That's got to be it. Checking to make sure he himself isn't bleeding, or maybe to make sure that he didn't get any of Tank's blood on him. Very, very image conscious, is he? And now, what is this? Double Crimson! Under. Crimson! Oh! Lotus Bomb! He calls it cover. a Crimson Lotus Bomb! And that's it! A release? What was that? A release Tiger Bomb? Look to appear like that, I would have to say. Just and absolutely. that's a pretty devastating move. I mean, you getting flipped in the air like that, and then that drop. Oh, he's not going with you. You're just falling on your own. It's a free fall state at that point. No way to prepare. You just have to hope you land correctly. I can only imagine how terrible that would have been if King wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have let him go at such a time. He might have landed right on his head. The winner of this match. Sam King! Regardless, the Emerald Ace victorious in his match tonight against Tank Davis, and I'm sure Jack Cage is probably very proud. Earlier, Sam King said he was going to show why he should have been in the main event, and well, he just made an example out of Tank Davis right there. Now telling the crowd to bow before the Emerald Ace. His last name isn't King for no reason. Oh my 
God, man. That was your tag team partner. Matt Gray is oh, out Gray. here. Oh, Tank Davis is good. This is Tank Davis. Oh, come on. Wow. That's... What the hell? What is wrong with you, Kate? Tank Davis just out on his feet here. I'm, I admire the incredible self-restraint that it took Matt Gray not to slide into that ring and knock both of them out. We have to move on here to the next match, which is going to have some consequences, I think, for uh, our first match on the card that we saw, that Fatal 4-Way. Cedric Young, Kota Amura, Thrill Seekers Championship. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the AWE Thrill Seeker Championship. And I'm sure that uh, Cash the Ironheart is watching this match very, very closely. Two of the best young talents in AWE so far go head to head in this contest. Most hyped guys, I'd probably say. Oh my I gosh. Can't Cedric, yet. Cedric Young, of course, made his debut in that newcomer's five way at Wee Sandin' Off 3, where we also saw the debut of uh, Chris Tesla, who was in the uh, opening contest. He won. <clears throat> Danny, he won after eliminating literally every other participant in the match. He eliminated all four other men. He is, you know. All things considered, he is an extremely bright young competitor, christening himself names like the Icon, Miami's Finest, and honestly, after a display like that at We Stand, I'm tempted to believe him. I'm almost tempted to believe him. I mean, he is a really good talent here. One of the best uh, strikers I've seen. I mean, I've seen him in STW, I've seen him in AWE here. I mean, he's a prime talent here. Absolutely. I'd say he's a he's a bit of a rough diamond, though. I wouldn't say he's a fine diamond. He's That's got a me. got a little bit of fine tuning, maybe. I can agree with you on that one, but you know, maybe it'll be less like a diamond and more like a fine wine, and it just gets better with age. So there's no saying whether or not for sure, but I think Cedric Alexander, I'm sorry, Cedric Young can only get better as time goes on. Yeah, that would be his team with Brian Alexander, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah. If, uh, if, <laughs> if FTL ever decides to bring in yet another member, maybe we can get Cedric Alexander as a team. What a challenge he has ahead of him, though. Yes, Kota Imura. Defeated Will Vintage at least standing on three to become the new Thrill Seeker champion. For this, he'd been involved in a violent feud with Panic. And uh, Kota came out on top. Like Cedric Young, Kota also debuted winning the newcomer's five way at least standing off two. Which is another uh, interesting tidbit in this match. Both of these men won their newcomer's five ways. Do you think that maybe the. the the current position that Kota is in could be like a, a look into the future for Cedric Young. Quite possibly. I mean, winning matches like those, those will get you right near the top of the card. As we see here, this is match number eight for the Thrill Seekers Championship. It's, it's a pretty prominent spot for both of these guys here. Absolutely. You gotta wonder what type of hair dye this man uses. Do you go to a parlor? Do you go to a hair salon? Oh, man, could you imagine how much that would cost if you went to a parlor for this? Oh my god, probably like $200 or something. Oh, that's I don't even want to spend that amount of money on, like, a lot of things, let alone just my hair. But you know what? When you're the champion, you get, you get a pretty good paycheck. Hey, I mean, yeah. I can see, I can see why. 
Regardless here, the virtual glitch. Onomura takes on Miami's finest, the icon Cedric Young. For that, Thrill Seeker Championship. Introducing first, wrestling out of Miami, Florida, and weighing in tonight at 223 pounds, he is the winner of the AWE Newcomer 5-Way, the icon Cedric Young. And his opponent, wrestling out of Robbinsdale, Minnesota, and weighing in tonight at 216 pounds, he is your reigning and defending AWE Thrill Seeker Champion, the Virtual Glitch, Kota Amura. <clears throat> Do you think Kota Amura has some Minnesota connections? Hmm. Do you think he knows, like, Brock Lesnar? I think he might know Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne? Wow. <laughs> Isn't he dead? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I oh, guess... Five. Okay, fine. Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne. Oh, I'd be surprised if he wasn't... If he was uh, not dead, too. Look at that beautiful belt. <laughs> hey, yeah, regardless. Thrill Seekers title match. <laughs> Referee rings the bell. This match is underway. Both these men, as, as good, I would say, technical wrestlers, as they also are high flyers. You know, obviously, Kota Amura has at least some skill if he's the... Thrill Seeker champion, and we all witnessed exactly how good Cedric Young can be whenever he won that Thrill Seekers, or not Thrill Seekers, the newcomers 5 way uh, we stand. Oh. Of course, as you mentioned, there are different types of scenes out there, like the Minnesota scene and like the Florida scene. Florida scene has more of a fight or flight type wrestling style. Minnesota's more technical, ground based. Yes. Uh, very brawl heavy. As we're seeing here on the outside, both these men falling. Oh, just slapping his fists away here. Romero shoves him off. These guys don't want to spend too much time out on the outside of the ring. Both Ooh, are, uh, he oh, wait. Oh! oh famous sir. Kotaro Crusher. Into the cover now. Oh, that was a close one, though. Stop there. Trying oh, with that good. side headlock and oh. Oh, showing off. Oh, the skills of Cedric Young. Big Beautiful crap. jumping elbow. In a bit of a showboat here. And, and again, again, going into drops that. down into that headlock. And circles around Kota Amura right now, and now by the ankle. Ooh. Oh, a smart move. Kota Amura, uh, quite the high flyer in his own right. Attacking that leg is definitely going to assist Cedric in being able to quell some of that offense, as you see here. Oh! Just going after those <laughs> legs. His knees. Oh, big drop kick right back. back. Cedric kind of embodying that Minnesota wrestling type style. To prove to Kota Amura, yeah, I can do that too. Yeah. Although we don't see it a lot in Kota Amura, he's just making fun of his time. <laughs> Cedric Young truly uh, embodying oh, also that. Oh, wait. Oh. Truly trying to show off why he is Miami's finest. It, uh, you don't get to the point that Cedric is by just you know sitting by and not showing off a little bit. You know, you gotta let people know. Let people know that you're, uh, you're just as good as uh, you look at yourself to be. And now trying to get him with that chin lock. Just try to take some type of control here, away from Cedric Young. Get all the energy out of Cedric Young. That might prove to be a tough task, though. As you can see, struggling to his feet is Young. Now, Schultz in. Oh! Face first into the knee! I, don't I know what you would call that. I, well, regardless, I hope, uh, I hope Kota Amura has some good dental insurance. I hope that 
that's carried with being the Thrill Seeker champion because I'd probably want to go get checked at the dentist after a move like that. Oh, oh God! It took so much out of him. That simple arm drag. Kota slowly onto his feet. Well, I know for a fact from Daniel Fuller, he did say that everyone here has health insurance. Like that. Oh, that's, that's good. Including us? Could you imagine a wrestling promotion not having health insurance? Oh, that would suck. Do we have health that insurance? Would suck. Oh, I have health insurance. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, as long as we stay behind the commentary table, I guess we don't have to worry too much. Yeah. Oh, oh the strength. strength suplex. The strength of Kota Amura now showing off that technical wrestling ability. As he just now powers Cedric to the mat. Oh like this. Oh he did the deal! He's done the deal! Cover! Oh, oh! Wait a minute. Kota. Look at that! Showing off the skills. A standing moonsault into the cover now. Oh, we got him! What a finish. What a way to end the match. Just absolutely styling on Cedric Young. Putting him away with that, that standing moonsault. And it seems, like I said earlier, uh, he, as good as Cedric is, it might take some more time before he's on the level quite like... Uh, Regardless, still, you're a Thrill Seekers champion. The Virtual Glitch. We saw Cedric Young almost get the best of Kota here in this match. Of course, it was that people's moonsault here. The winner of this match is still AWE Thrill Seeker champion, Kota Amara. There we go. He's going to meet the Iron Heart Cash at our next paper. Now that match, I'm excited. I'll be where the glitch and the man with the robot arm. It's, it's almost perfect. I was gonna say, do you think Cedric or not Cedric? Do you think Coda could could influence Cash's robot arm and glitch you think it he out? Could hack into it and glitch oh. it out? Oh. That might need to be a concern brought up to uh, AWE management. So, well, I mean, we already have a lot of magic and all that kind of stuff going on. What's a hacker? That's true. Regardless, you're a champion. As we move on here. To our, I believe, our semi-main event of the evening. Yes. Women's Championship. We don't even know who's going to challenge for this belt. All we know is the champion is. It is an open challenge. CJ Jelani is, seems pretty uh, confident in her abilities here. Your semi-main events of the evening scheduled for one fall is for the AWE Women's Championship. favorite theme song of mine. Here she comes, the beast of Cherry Hill. CJ Jelani was AW's resident rookie for a while, having a mix of wins and losses here and there before finally staking her claim to glory by winning the women's fatefully. And meanwhile, though, she caught the eye of another competitor named Looney forming a few that began to grow quite personal. Absolutely. Eventually, of course, those two met up and we stand three. CJ successfully challenged Looney for the women's title. Looney had an iron grip on that belt and CJ had just enough to put her away. She left night one as champion and then uh, at Colors Flying High, in the final show, she had her first defense against none other than Tiffany Lanza, who had won a Rumble to challenge for the belt, become a number one contender earlier on 
and now this is her second defense, and what a second defense. An open challenge for the Women's Championship. To anybody. anybody. I hope to God it's not Brad. I was going to say, it's even I will Brad throw a fit here. I will leave the commentary booth. <laughs> Scream, you might run in on that match. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just might run over and kick Brad right between his legs. Christy Redding! Wow! A debut here! Oh man! She freaking loves Sonic. The Super Sonic Christy Redding! What a Wow! Uh, was on the other side of the COD companies for a long while, finally making her debut on this side. Has a whole, she has a whole new selection, a whole new world of, of opportunities open to her now that she's been allowed to compete over here with us. And it looks like she's taken her first opportunity here as she challenges for the women's championship. I mean, this is quite the quite the place to debut, quite the match to debut in for Christy Redding. Introducing first, the challenger, wrestling out of New Jersey, Super Sonic, Christy Redding! And her opponent, the champion, wrestling out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, she is your reigning and defending AWE Women's Champion, the Beast of Cherry Hill, CJ Jelani! Yeah. I don't often like to make predictions because I like to keep the integrity of the sport and I like to congratulate whoever wins. But, I mean, CJ's been on such a hot streak, I've got to think that this match is a must-win for her. Well, don't doubt the tenacity of Christy Redding, Mr. Brendan. We have, like, one of the two of the best talents here in our company, let alone the uh, car. Absolutely. Here we go. Which is on the way, calling her type center. Backs her into the corner. Surprising uh, strength from Christy Redding to force the women's champion back like that. Whoa, oh, strike oh. gun. Oh, God. Not quite. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. What a spiral. Corkscrew drop kick there from Christy Redding. Oh. And Oh! Drops it right oh, on her tailbone. <laughs> yeah. Stop the arm. Oh god, she's going crazy. Oh, no. She's moshing. Open this pit up. Big oh. swinging neck breaker. I'm sure Christy Redding wants nothing more than to prove herself to not only CJ Jelani but the rest of the women's locker room and the fans that she is someone to be, uh, I guess, someone to beware. Though her, her her stature isn't quite as large as someone maybe like Laura Hunt, uh, Christy Redding definitely has all the tools, all the tools to make an impact in AWE. And I think that a perfect way to start is by challenging CJ Delani here tonight. Yes, I mean, winning the women's title oh, in your debut is a huge, huge thing. It was a huge accomplishment. And now, well, whoa, monkey flip. That's executed there by the women's champion, CJ Delani. CJ basing herself on Christie's legs a lot in this match. Oh! She gets the double knees in the corner for that. Especially after what CJ witnessed uh, Christie could do, that corkscrew, corkscrew drop kick of some sort. I mean, if that were the case, I'd want to target the legs as well. Because that looked like it hurt a lot. Wow, she shook the 
camera. <laughs> she is a big and strong. Chest. She is the beast. From Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. Oh! oh. Right back to the legs. Oh, stomping at the legs, too. It's technical offense of CJ Jelani. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. It's always good to target our body part. And honestly, I can't think of a better one than the leg. CJ Jelani. Oh! Is oh! Ooh. Rings are down. Back of her head. Neck right right onto the canvas. And cover. Oh. And that STO. Yeah, now it's just stomping oh. on her head. God! Ruthless, vicious, vicious, ruthless offense by CJ. Oh. Kick out of just one by Christy Redding. Yes, he has a lot of heart and a lot of tenacity. Now, oh, rounds her. Squeeze it on that neck. Slow everything down, and that's especially helpful with someone like Christy Redding. We've seen how fast she can be. Nope. She turns out of that into her own headlock there. Oh, but she gets caught. Oh! Front slam. Front slam into that bow stretch there. In the corner. Uh, cover. Oh, I said oh. I'm thinking about coming out. Caught her. Now, oh. trips the leg. Oh, single leg crab. The Cherry Hill crab. And some torque on that leg and sitting on the oh, spine. God. Oh. Four. CJ with a job breaker. Nice and executed by Jelani. Big calf kick. She's going to the top rope. Wow. Up to the top rope. Up like a bat out of hell. Frog oh, splash. splash. All of that momentum coming crashing down on Christy. Oh, and a kick Whoa. out. A dangerously close fall for Christy Redding. And she stays in it barely, but she stays in it regardless. Jelani has to be looking to put away Christy here. And Christy Redding doesn't want to let her. What a move! Oh, man! Drops her with that one. Two, two, no. No. The women's champion for a reason. Not going to go down after just one big move. Oh, sidekick. Now, Christy ready in control here. Now she's going after. Oh. Frank. CJ's got to look to regain control and put this one away. Because, frankly, I think Christy Redding's giving her definitely a run for her money here. Oh, as I say oh. that, turns her around, oh, caught her. Ripcord, oh, what a knee. Putting Christy out with that ripcord knee strike. Perhaps too uh, exhausted to capitalize. Uh oh. Oh! oh. Gotta follow him right up. Back with you now. Might we see it? Greetings from Cherry Hill. Into the cover. That could be enough. No! Oh no! Wow. She kicked out. Christy with a huge kick out. We thought that might have been enough, but Christy Redding still has a lot of fight in her. And now, uh, getting these lines. Big jumping attack in the corner there. Wow, look at the vertical. CJ Jelani, the skills on showcase showing exactly why. She was the one to beat Looney in the first place. Okay. Oh, small package driver! My God! 
dropping CJ right on her head. Two. Oh. oh. That could have been one of the biggest upsets of the year right there. Oh, my gosh. I think uh, after this match, CJ, both CJ and Christy should probably get checked, make sure they don't, uh, they're not injured. That oh. drop, that small package driver. Christy hangs on. CJ wants her back in the ring. Oh, and she will oblige. Forearm shot there. That is back rotation. Look at that! Oh, that backdrop. Oh, wow. You see the way her back went there. Now look at this. Stiff. Oh. Into an arm bar. That gym breaks arm bar. And now, Christy, she's going to tap. No. Nice. Nice escape there by CJ Jelani. Oh, uh -oh. Up for it she again. caught her. Greetings from Cherry Hill. Good God, that's got to be it. You can't take too many of those and keep kicking. One wasn't enough, but two was. CJ Jelani retains. Valiant effort there by Christy Redding, though. I have to have major props to her. What a match. Her debut. Oh my gosh. She took the champion to the limit. Absolutely, Christy Redding. If that was an indicator of how good she is in the ring, which I'm sure it was, she has a very, very bright future ahead of her in AWR. You know, Christy Redding had that agility to her. CJ showed it right there, too. The winner of this Absolutely. match, and still AWE Women's Champion, CJ Jelani. A valiant fighting champion retains Congratulations. once more. Congratulations to the Women's Champion, CJ Jelani. Handshake. There we go. Respect you, is given. You love to see it. Christy Redding put up one hell of a fight. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. That's a hunt. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. What in the hell? Oh. Oh. Good god. Oh my god. Christy Redding getting up. Oh, Laura Cotter. Oh, no. She's just throwing a vicious assault here. Oh, Lord. what is the meaning of this? We just had a respectful, like, competitive match, and now Laura Hunt just... I guess she's a bit jealous here. Oh, oh God. What is she going to do? What in the hell? What? Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. The, the strength! Oh my god! Holy oh my shit! God. Double F5! Double F5! Laura Hunt! I, uh, I think I'm... I think I know who wants to challenge for the belt next! Valkitagawa? Aiden's to... Are these two a team now? It seems as if the hunter and the wolf have made some sort of pact here. What a what a what an agreement! What a what a team! I think uh, they have just put the whole women's locker room on notice with that one. But now. Main event time. Main event time. A year in the making. At least two years in the making. One fall to a finish as you see there on the graphic. Your main event of the evening is a singles match scheduled for one fall and it is for the AWE Undisputed Championship. Comes the Arabian Dragon. 
a man who has been waiting a long, long time for this match, for this opportunity. I mean, Yazid had perhaps one of AWE's best comeback stories. He spent a few good years reviled, even being a member of the infamous Age of Gold faction for a point in time. After being booted from the group, he began to make a change. He go on to become the one versus all champion, currently holding the defense record as we speak for the belt, 10 defenses. And as part of the Tile Town Titans, he was also the sole survivor of the 2020 Summer Wars match. After being injured by Seth Siegel in the ICS, he also went on to Stand Bray to defeat Seth. Go through all this time, he's also been throwing many challenges to Daniel Fulmer. Now this contestant challenges Daniel Fulmer to have fair. You know, Yazid, I think, might be one of the most skilled individuals that I've seen in that ring. You know, he has so many different options that he can attack you with. I was singing the praises of Nick Calloway earlier. I feel like Yazid is right up there, too. Yazid is, is just, you know, a one-of-a-kind talent. Of course, he won the Foley Award for uh, Best Match of the Year with Matt Gray in Absolutely. 2019. And he deserved it. Without Absolutely. a doubt. Defeating Matt Gray's undefeated streak at that time. Can he defeat Daniel Bullhardt's defense record? His defenses. Dragon here to make a statement. Can you imagine what it will do for Yazid and Title Town if he's able to pick up the victory here tonight? But first, and much like his cause brethren before him, going to make his opponent wait. himself would say it is your idol like I don't it or know where not, he got that notion from like it or not this is the undisputed champion the idol Daniel Foolhardy and if you'll allow me partner I'm sure you have some thoughts but I'd like to say some things about Daniel Foolhardy first of course like his cause brethren rabbit he is an AWE original the inaugural tag team champion. He's a two-time world champion. Won the fateful eight. He's had a storied career. His current reign started, of course. He sealed his fate against the new, at that point, new undisputed champion, Makop Depp, at the end of Ballroom Blitz 2020, with the help of Cause Brethren Rabbit. And of course, at We Stand 3, he main evented against JJ Strife, only to be taken out by Sam King along with Strife. Now he stands against Yazid. Hopefully, for his sake, he has as much focus as he did in that title match at the stand. One would hope. I mean, this is his second defense against the Titan. Let's so hope it goes to a conclusive finish this time. Now, introducing first. The challenger, wrestling out of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and weighing in tonight at 233 pounds, he represents the title town titans, the Arabian Dragon, Yazid! 
and his opponent, the champion. Wrestling out of Kent, Washington and weighing in tonight at 215 pounds. He represents the cause and he is your reigning and defending AWE Undisputed Champion. He is your idol, Daniel Foolhardy. Is he your idol? No. I don't think he's anyone's idol besides Cosmo. And then even that, that might be a stretch. Oh. I don't know. Maybe there's some crazy person in the audience who doesn't believe in <laughs> Regardless of that fact, as I said before, Daniel Foolhardy, your undisputed champion tonight. He looks to make, I believe, his third defense. Yes. His first defense oh. came at Aldo Anthony at uh, Avangelion 2.22. And then his second defense, I mean, if you want to call it that, where JJ oh. Strife beat him by disqualification. But he still had the title. He still defended it. Of course, now number three. Oh, what a Liger kick! I do love me some Jushin Thunder Liger. Right now, Tiger oh, oh, and some Tiger Mask. And you know, I'm, we've been talking about Foolhardy all night. What kind of mental state do you think he has going into this match? Do you think he's still thinking about Sam King and JJ Strife? I would well, have to think so. I mean, he's got to go in there. He's probably looking behind his back whenever he does a move. He probably needs to bring his full attention to the Z. I would think that would, that's what he needs to do. Oh, should go for a spin on the Ducks it. Oh! That's executed the Z right back up onto his feet. The tenacity, the fiery soul of Yazid on display here as he continues on the assault. This Yazid has wanted this match for a long time. And to finally get a shot at Daniel Florey, not just at him, but at the world title. That is a big stakes right there. Big motivator. Absolutely. Now you can see he's eating that camel clutch. Wrenching back on the spine of Foolhardy. And of course, oh, Foolhardy is experienced. He has wrestled all over the world. And now, oh. no coup driver there. I mean, he has that world title for a reason. That being smart and being just a pretty good technical wrestler. Well, that's something I didn't expect to hear tonight. At least some praises sung by uh, Andrew Whedon here about Mr. Foolhardy. I will give the man his due. I, even though I don't like how he treats people or how he acts, I mean, he is a good talent. You gotta give it to him there. And speaking of good talents, also Yazid is Ooh. a an accomplished and decorated superstar in his own right. And now with that arm and leg bar, he gets out of it. Nicely slips out of it there. Of course, Daniel Fuhardy Russell Evocation. Oh, oh, oh. That color's flying high, so he's probably still bruised, still a bit probably broke for that. Oh! Meteora there. Into the cover now. Is he kicking out? Yeah, you've got to imagine that a match against the guy like vacation. Those injuries aren't just going to go away the next night. They aren't going to go away after a little bit. Those kinds of injuries are going to stay around with you for a while, especially whenever you're someone that evocation has oh. apparently placed such a big target on you. Absolutely. Evocation and everyone in that locker room is looking at Daniel Fuhardy because he holds the World Heavyweight Championship. The undisputed title is the one everybody wants. On that Undoubtedly, the top prize for the male superstars and now maybe even the female superstars as well. Jesus. In AWE. Good work. Oh. Oh, oh. It's EDT. It's EDT. Plants Fuhardy. Go for the cover! Come on! Oh. No, he's taking his time. I don't oh. I think he thought he would have won. Oh no, he's no. going for the pin now. Going for the pin. We might have a new world champion here, no. No, only a one. 
I wouldn't be as shocked as you. I mean, he he tried to. He just took too much time there. Absolutely. And now, oh, another tiger oh suplex. Drops him right on the neck. Upper back. And now, oh, uh, what is God? We've seen this before. No, wait. Is he countered? Nicely countered. Nicely countered by Yazid into that Northern Lights. The technical ability of the Arabian Dragon. Oh my God, what a kick. Nearly taking the good. idol's head off his shoulders. Yazid now heading to the top. Whoa, hold on. Whoa, oh, oh. Yeah, the elbow. From the very top, all the way from the heavens. I get an angel falling and now. Wing of 40. Now back in control. Oh, God. Oh, kick in the gut. Yes, he needs Oh, he's busted Lord, open. He is bleeding. Could he be knocked out? No. Oh, no. We almost had a new world champion there. Fulhardy staring in disbelief at his own crimson mask. Uh oh. Dragon Driver. Dragon oh, Driver. my God. A cradle pile driver compressing Next his third. spine. Ah, oh, one world champion, Yazid, no! No! Yazid coming so close to this multiple times now. Setting up for maybe another Dragon Driver. This could put Fuhardy away. For a second time, he's got the cradle. Oh my god! Down. Snap him cover. down with that one. Two. Oh. oh! I heard a three! I heard a I heard a count. I'm not sure if that was legit. Oh. That might have been 2.9999. Foolhardy kicking out uh. right before the referee's hand slapped the mat. Oh. Now EDT. Now you Zed and now picking Foolhardy back up. So but Z just attacking mugging Foolhardy here. Oh, the line, but gets caught into a swing that breaker. And I think that's a perfect, uh, an, a perfect answer to my question earlier. You know, you gotta think. Oh, wait a minute. No, countered. Looking for another Yazidi T, but Fulardi this time counters it. And now suplex. Oh, oh, right bust. Oh, good God, drops him right on his head. But you've got to think that that attack from Sam King, as well as Evocation, has to be getting to the idol. With, oh God. Uh, with you know, the oh, idolizer allowing Yazid to hit so many of those hard hitting moves on him, but now Fulhardy seems to turn it around though. Oh, that ain't enough. I mean, you're so. being compressed in that cube and you're being dropped on your neck. It oh, surprises right me that a human body is able to sustain that. We all know the name, it's your, your idol. idol. God, you can see Cover. the blood running down Yazid's forehead too now. Two. Oh, no, only two. The Arabian Dragon stays in the fight. Still has that fire left in him. Kissing the wrist. And now Foolhardy. Back on the offensive. Sling blade. blade. And now, oh god, not again. Another one of those idolizers. Up. And down. Yeah. Oh. Neck. Wait, he's picking it back up. Oh, wait, Yazid's fighting back! Yazid fights back, the fighting spirit! Full hardy. Another Tiger suplex with a bridge! Oh, this time with a bridge! Can he retain? Oh. No. Oh, but he's not looking to waste any time here. Full hardy. Looking to put away Yazid, looking to silence his doubters with another Israel! Cover to retain the world title! One, two, two three. three! A huge win for the idol. And still, your undisputed champion. Yazid put in one hell of an effort there. He was so close. I bit so much on all those dragon drivers to put away Daniel Fuhardi. But it wasn't enough. Two it's your idols, Daniel Fulhardy got the victory. Another successful defense for Daniel
the winner of this match and still AWE Undisputed Champion, Daniel Foolhardy. Blood running down the forehead of Daniel Foolhardy. No matter what shape he's in, still your Undisputed Champion. Oh, now here comes here Sam comes King. The Emerald Ace. He picks up Yazid. Step all back no. in. What's wrong with you? Oh, oh, look, oh, oh God! Oh, oh my God! His neck! Oh no! Oh shit! Oh no! Oh, Yazid up to his feet, but oh God! This. Oh, oh what the hell? Poke in the eye! Come on! Oh no! The disrespect! The utter disrespect! Yazid. What's wrong Come with on. you? Questionably low. low. Kick. You can see Foolhardy hightailed it out of there. As as he should, and now King's landing. Yeah, I don't I don't blame him one bit. Look here, Foolhardy. You may have escaped me this time with a yellow streak going up and down your back, but only because the boss lady didn't seem to think that I'm worthy yet. But if I'm not worthy. Certainly none of this Titan trash is either. If I have to force the powers that be to grant me what's mine, I will. You clutch your little title a little bit longer. It is only a matter of time before it's mine. And God help you if you manage to slip up before I can get a hold of you. And that, my friend, is an emerald promise. And now, to close out this show with me. Like it should have been all along. Now hit my music. <laughs> well, regardless of how you feel, Sam King has made a statement here tonight. And we don't have much time left, but all I've got to say is... You know, Foolhardy has to be ready for anything, and right now I think he's definitely have to be ready for the Emerald Ace Sam King. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brendan Choley. This is Daniel Whedon. And from AWE Follow the Money, we bid you adieu.